Good evening, everyone. Don't you love how he says good evening? It sounds like the couch. Whoa, uh, 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 uh. Good evening. Well, you know. Anyway, hi, people. I'm Stephanie Hurd. I'm Michael Hurd. I'm glad he knows his name. It's very important. And I don't even have a name tag, unlike her. I'm not wearing my name tag. It's off. Okay. I took it off. Anyway, today we're talking about self-consciousness. I hope I didn't make you self-conscious. Uh, only a bit because she refused us to share notes with me. Mine. Oh, that has a drawing on it. Anyway! You may have seen it in an earlier blog entry. I like to draw. I painted the other day. It was fabulous. Anyway, let's move on. Self-consciousness. Darling, why do people get self-conscious? Because they're nervous around other people. They're nervous what people think, and uh, they put a lot of emphasis on other people's valuation of them. Ooh. Good answer. We're worried about our appearance, we're worried about our personality, we think we're not smart enough, we think our job status may depend on what we do next. Yep. And oftentimes we're also very, very, very nervous. In certain groups, we just shut down. Like that one time. We went to this bar thing with a bunch of friends, and uh, I didn't really enjoy it because the, there was a lot of people that I didn't know, there was a lot of noise, there was a lot of distractions, and I just started freaking out, feeling all self-conscious, and I started playing with my phone, which made him grumpy, and then made me grumpy, and then, uh, it was quite the mess, but, you know, we solved it. Yeah. And then there's also times where you seem to put on a mask with different groups of friends or family. Like all of a sudden, uh, Stephanie, that uh, I love and adore as my wife, is gone, and there's some circus performer who. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, don't quite I had recognize. to. <laughs> I had to. I had to. It was funny. <laughs> you said circus performer. It was on one of the cards last night. <laughs> well, anyway, so what happens when you're self conscious? Well, you probably don't resonate with who you naturally are in, at your core, so you're losing your energy and core, core of your purpose and being and stuff like that, and probably putting on, not doing your best at whatever it is you're trying to do. Ah, oh, absolutely. You're uncomfortable and it's debilitating. Yeah. That's basically what you're saying, I think. Ooh, we're Ooh. wiggling. This is getting interesting. Oh, okay. I, I well, think we're getting somewhere. Oh, I can see myself again. Yeah, we don't look like Jordy LaForge's visor vision. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Anyway, trying to be more prepared when tested by others or during a test. The scariest part for me is probably going into a test. Oftentimes I'd sit there and I'd be doing my test. Ooh, this answer's A. Ooh, I know this answer. That one's B. That one's definitely A again. Ooh, that one's C. And all of a sudden I'd look up and I'd see this person, as I'm only partway done, get up and hand in their test paper. And I go, oh crap. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. What time is it? Do I have enough time? Am I gonna finish this on time? What am I gonna do? Okay, okay. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Done! Eh, it didn't really work very well. I was also freaking myself out because I didn't give myself enough time to study. So I was always self-conscious that I would fail. Yeah, it kind of sucked. Well, this sounds like a good time to tell about uh, your uh, learner's tests. No. Uh -uh. Let's move on to the next one. I think she's self-conscious. I'm that. not self-conscious. It's just not the time yet. He, he's um, not at the right step yet. We're at step two. Okay. Now we're going to step three. Negativity brings about negativity. Yes or no? Like attracts like. So definitely, if you're thinking negative thoughts, it can be like a crap magnet and bring more crap towards you. So when you complain and criticize yourself and others, it tends to bring more of that crap and bad stuff in your life because, hey, it's 
you know, life is sensing, hey, this person likes negativity because that's all they talk about. <laughs> so we're going to give them more stuff to talk about. Hmm. I like you. You have some good statements. Do you think that's why I married you? Among other reasons. Yeah, true. Anywho, next one. Number four. Fight your fears as long as you can. This is a tough one. This is the license story right here. You got to understand that driving wasn't exactly the thing that people were the most confident of a Stephanie to do. They still aren't. So my father would say things such as, oh gosh, I'll clear all the streets before you drive. You pass a driver's test? <laughs> you can't even pass a school exam. What makes you think you're going to be able to pass a driver's test? Or my brother's going, I don't even want you to pass your driver's test. If you pass your driver's test, that means you get to drive. Oh my gosh, what if you can't... And we're back with the spliced in, hopefully, if I can do the video editing. Technical difficulties chopped off uh, the last video. And so uh, we're continuing on with wife, wifey Stephanie's uh, riveting story of her getting over her self-consciousness and getting her learner's permit. After taking the test 37 times. Yeah. That's a lot of times. It was a lot of times that you were self-conscious about it. Yeah, gotta love fathers. Father, brother, niece. Yeah, practically everyone was against me even being on a road, weren't they? Yes. Except for my mother. She's the only one that believed in me. That's a good thing. Mommies are, uh, mommies need to believe in their children. Go oh, mommies. So anyway, he made me practice again and again and again. It was a torturous subject. I will be honest with you. Tests, practice tests, retest, read the book. Did you read the first chapter? Tell me about the first chapter. Was it riveting? Absolutely not. Was it difficult? Well. If you have ADHD and you're watching this, you're, you totally can relate. It's like, oh my dear goodness. Class 1 license is as follows. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. License. Blah, blah, blah. Air brakes. Not exciting at all. Not at all. So anyway, trying to go through this, trying to read this, and then doing practice tests. My personal favorite fail. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Um, probably, I think it was time 31. Yes, time 31. Definitely time 31. I do remember this one really clearly. I'm almost done my test. Quiet you. I'm almost done my test. Huh. <coughs> anyway, where's that pencil I was poking him with? What? You got our tools. It makes it entertaining. Okay, so I was almost done my test. Last question I was allowed to get wrong. I had just gotten wrong. And this was the last question. If I would have gotten this one right, I would have passed. And guess what it was? If you're going around a curve, what do you do with your feet? Oh, I, how the heck would I know? And do a tap dance? <laughs> like, what would have you answered? What do you do with your feet when you're going around a curve? Well, depends whether I'm driving standard or automatic. It's the same but, thing for both. But you'd probably have your foot over the brake. Yep, you cover the brake. What did I see my brother do? Take his foot off the gas. That was it. So I picked take your foot off the gas. Yeah, that's why 31 didn't work well for me. But anyway, I passed. I had someone who allowed me to face my fears by letting me fester in it, even though it was hard, even though it was difficult, and didn't want to do it. Oh, I'm covering your face. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. You're cute. Anyway, the point of the matter was, you stay in your fear and fight it as long as you can. It's very important to have that. Because I was able to fight my fear. He made a distraction, well, you know, figures ADHD, I can distract her. 
And it worked! He told me to get all sexy and to put on makeup and do my hair. I feel really good. I wanted her to have a good driver's license picture. Because yeah. most people complain that the driver's license pictures are ugly. <laughs> yes, they are. So anyway, after that, I passed. I put in earplugs to help me with my backup plan because I thought the reasons why I'm having so much fear is because I hear everybody. And I just did my test. And when I did my test, oh, it was so good. I passed. Passed, passed, passed. So anyway, number five. Stop looking at my notes. What's wrong with you? I was going to help with the recap. When you read the notes, you research. You think too much. You should, you should watch some of his interviews. My favorite is when he gets on and he goes, <coughs> Hello, I'm Michael Hurd, and we're on ADHD Expression, and today we are interviewing. I'm like, where's the emotion? For those who don't know anything about my husband, he's a Toastmaster for crying out loud. He learns how to do speeches every Wednesday. And if, well, you know, he'll, he'll put something about Toastmasters on now that I, you know. At some point, maybe I'll throw up a speech. But going back to step number five, the final step. Honey, you started deviating by looking at my notes. That was your fault. Anyway, evaluation. That's our next one. Why is it important to evaluate your self-consciousness and your surroundings? Seems to be a round circle going back to awareness, so I guess uh, evaluating, seeing how it went when you faced your fears and uh, stewed in it and were prepared and seeing, hey, it wasn't so bad after all, actually it was pretty good. And also probably the most thing is, most important thing is just trying to reinforce a positive habit versus a negative habit because for many people not just ADHD ears, but most people, they make a mistake, they dwell on it forever, they say, oh, stupid me, I was the one who did that, did that, I always stub my, stub my toe on that laundry hamper, and over and over, over again. I threw a book at him because he left it there. And, until fi fi finally they have a phobia around laundry hampers. I do not. I'm just going with a little ana analogy here. Lies! Yeah, I'm the only one who does laundry here. Well, the guy downstairs scares me. Okay, anyways, it's enforcing this negative behavior and negative habits so you don't want to face the fear. Whereas when you do face the fear, even if it's a little fear, such as a chore or something like that, I'm not going to get any examples, otherwise I'm going to afflict. <laughs> but... <laughs> But just congratulate and celebrate those victories. And they it's, are victories. They are victories. Because small victories lead to medium victories, lead to large victories, lead to supersized victories. McDonald's has victories? Well, that and the AMWs you forced me to get you tonight. I'm sorry, but my medication runs out. I'm hungry. Anyway, so. Yes, and her medication has run out. That's okay. Yeah. Now they know the true me. Oh. oh! Having ADHD is not a horrible thing. But being self-conscious that everybody's always looking at you because you're different, that is the bad thing. Don't do it. It bothers me when people take part of themselves and squish it downward because they think that's what people want. You are who you are. That's number one thing I want to teach you. It, it is a self-consciousness issue with a lot of us, including me. I wonder, oh, Gray, what did my ADHD and I do now? But if I think of it in a different light, I'm not ADHD. I'm a person with ADHD. And it is a part of me, and it is who I am. And I shouldn't feel bad because I am who I am. Oh, you're cute. Anyway, but the... What? Why are you laughing? Sorry, I am distracted, I'll admit it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the point of the matter is, if he'd stop distracting me with his cuteness, 
men, huh? Yeah, it's definitely a problem looking into the camera. Oh. She can see all the faces I'm making behind her. It's an advantage. I'm thinking he has ADHD too. Anyway, I'm Stephanie. This is Michael. Signing off.